Hello brothers and sisters, today is Tuesday, April 17, 2018. And I want to bring to you a little discussion that I've had regarding the neutering of God in the Adventist Church. There was some reaction from some individuals regarding the last video I put up, so I figured that it might be worth our while going into greater detail regarding the modifications made to the 28 fundamental beliefs. When anyone decides to make changes in the foundational documents of an organisation, it is worth carefully going through the script to read the changes and the underlying motivations behind those changes. The fundamental beliefs of the Adventist Church are now in their third approved revision. The first revision only had 27 doctrines. The second one had an extra fundamental doctrine added, making up 28 doctrines. And the third revision stayed at the same number but has had the language regarding the six day creation tightened up and this was the apparent reason for changing the 28 fundamental beliefs this last time now when language is so important that it is necessary to tighten it up in regards to a particular doctrine then one can expect similar scrutiny to apply to any other changes that were made in that document. It is, after all, a critical component of who we are as Adventists. But alas, dear brethren, it would appear that such scrutiny was not made in some other modifications that were also made to this document simultaneously. These modifications were approved along with the ostensible modifications. You can find them in the relevant document under the title Inclusive Language. This comment appears eight times in the recommended modifications to the document. None of them are exclusive. There is a link to the relevant document in the low bar. Now the problem I have with this effort is that the Bible is an exclusive book. It excludes the wicked from heaven. It excludes those who refuse to follow the teaching of the Bible from church. And it excluded females from serving as priests in the temple. Interestingly, the God of the Bible is the only God who excludes females from the temple service. The surrounding nations had serving in the temples of their gods, females, which puts the lie to the argument that the practice of excluding females from temple service was a cultural artefact. In addition, when Aaron and Miriam were both called up before God at the temple for their dispute with Moses over leadership of the nation of Israel, only Miriam faced the wrath of God. Aaron was left alone in spite of the fact that both of them were rebuked. A clear distinction being made by God between male and female. In addition, the Bible is not a book of equality in spite of the arguments made to the contrary by others. This inequality has been ordained from the beginning when the man was created before the woman. This is further reinforced by a principle followed both in the Bible and all demographics of society today. The principle being that the name giver asserts rights and or authority over the name receiver. It was Adam who asserted this authority over his partner the moment God brought him before her by giving her the name woman a name that has been accepted by the female society from that day to this parents in all cultures name their children asserting authority over their children and the children recognize this 
authority. So what we see now is our church working against this distinction ordained by God by including eight changes in the fundamental beliefs under the title inclusive language. So let's take a look at these changes. The link to the document I'm about to show is in the low bar. And here we are. As you can see, the changes begin right in the first fundamental belief. Fundamental belief number one. We see that holy men of God now become holy persons of God. And this is mentioned over here as being inclusive language as the reason for the change. We also notice that the second change is also inclusive language. We used to say God has committed to man the knowledge necessary. It is now becoming God has committed to humanity the knowledge necessary for salvation. Okay. We will then go to fundamental belief number four and we saw that Christ, he became also truly human, whereas prior he became also truly man. Once again, the reason for the change being given as inclusive language. We then go to fundamental belief number seven, which has had its title changed. Now says the nature of humanity, as opposed to prior, it said the nature of man. Once again, as you can see, inclusive language is the motivation for the change. Nothing to do with what the Bible has to say on the matter. Okay, we can go to fundamental belief number 12. And once again, it says here, for service to humanity, whereas prior to that it was service to all mankind. And the motivation, once again, is inclusive language. Then we teleport down to doctrine number 19. The law of God. And it talks about our concern for our fellow human beings, whereas before it was our concern for our fellow men. Inclusive language. Then we go to fundamental belief 21. We acknowledge God's ownership by faithful service to him and our fellow human beings. Prior to that it used to be service to him and our fellow men. Inclusive language, the motivating factor once again. Okay, so now we'll come to fundamental belief number 24, line 25. It's the sanctuary in heaven, the true tabernacle, which the Lord set up and not humans. It used to be what the Lord set up and not man. This one here gives me a bigger problem than some of the others because if we go to... Hebrews 8, 2. Let's go and check that up. It 
Hebrews 8.2. There it is. And here we are. A minister of the sanctuary, Hebrews 8 2, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man. Very clearly there refers to man. And you'll find in most other translations of the Bible, it very clearly says, The Lord set up and not man. And that is the last of the changes. There should be a total of eight changes in all where inclusive language has happened. The problem I have, especially with doctrine number four, if we go back to it, is that by saying that uh, Christ became truly human, the gender is nondescript. Was Jesus a man or was he not? In fact, I almost am tempted to change the title of this particular discussion, Removing the Testicles of Christ. At the end of it all, it is perceived, given the way these changes move away from the Bible, that this is simple pandering to the feminist lobby. As a consequence, I personally cannot go along with these changes and would ask the church at large to consider rolling back these changes in the interest of remaining true to the Bible as opposed to pandering to the feminist lobby of the church in particular and worldly popularity at large. I'm George Tasker, your judgmental Adventist. you still here, eh? Oh well. If you're not about to enjoy the torture that I'm going to inflict upon your ears, then I judge your ears not worthy of the body that they are attached to. I have walked with
Baby.